Isn't philosophy just a bunch of questions without any answers? Why would anybody want to waste their time doing something like that? Let's consider. Hello philosophers, I'm Chico. Welcome to The Philosopher Show, where we explore the greatest questions of human history. Uh, by the way, if you hear a little pitter-patter on the roof, uh, it's raining in Southern California, kind of a weird thing for us. But it's great to be back here in the studio. Uh, Albuquerque was awesome, but yeah, nice to be home. Uh, so the question today, can we ever know anything in philosophy? You know, when I was in high school, uh, I was taught that there, uh, in the medieval times, they would ask questions uh, weird questions like how many angels could dance on the head of a pin uh, and I was taught that you know they'd sit around debating stuff like this and of course you know that seems so ridiculous so I thought it, that's stupid you know obviously in medieval times they were really dumb and then I heard some questions in philosophy later on that, that sound something like that right so for example uh, how do you know that the universe didn't double in size just now uh, you know, if you were to take out a ruler and try to measure stuff and see, you know, if that was twice the size it originally was, then the ruler would also be twice the size that it originally was. So it seemed like nothing had changed. So it seems like you can't know that the universe didn't just double in size, but that's really stupid, right? I mean, nobody actually thinks that the universe did that. So if those are the kinds of questions that we ask in philosophy, why would you waste your time doing something like that? Well, I don't actually think that's a good example. So, for, well, first of all, I found out later on that no one actually asked that question in the medieval times, that that was a later on fabrication, I, I think from the uh, uh, Enlightenment period or something like that, when the people are just trying to make fun of uh, medieval theologians. But you could ask that question, right? You could ask that question, and if you did, you wouldn't be asking that question because you thought that you'd get to an actual answer, like five or something like that. Really more, you would be asking that question rhetorically, uh, asking that question to illustrate a point. And the point being, you could have an unlimited number of non-physical things in a physical location, if that were the case. I mean, I'm not saying that angels exist, or if they do exist, it doesn't really matter. That's just the point of, of, of a question like that. Same thing with this philosophical question. I could ask that question, how do you know the, the universe didn't double in size? Um, and I don't really ask that question because I want people to debate that question. Really, I ask it to illustrate uh, an epistemological point, which is that we there are certain things that we can't be certain of, or maybe a point about measurement, that which is that all measurement is just uh, one thing relative to another, and there's no objective standard of um, uh, one foot is exactly this long. You know, something like that. So we don't always ask these questions because uh, they, we want a specific answer from them, you know, or because we want to debate them. Sometimes we ask these questions rhetorically. Um, I don't think, however, that most philosophical questions are like that. Most philosophical questions aren't as, as, uh, as strange, as outré, as they would say in the French. Um, I don't speak French at all. I don't even know where I heard that word, so there you go. It's a French word for you. Um, but I, I also think this objection that philosophy doesn't get at questions that we can know um, is, uh, is not a good one for a second reason. Uh, there are all kinds of things that we believe that we are not absolutely certain of. Like, um, think about your knowledge of the past. You're not seeing the past right now, right? You're not looking back in time exactly the way things have gone. And in fact, a lot of times uh, our, our memories have been uh, shown to be erroneous. Check out the Mandela effect if you want to see more about that weird stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, it's not the case that we can 100% trust our memories. And if that's the case, most scientific experiments are done in the past, not being done right now as we speak. And even if you've done, uh, even if you're in the middle of a scientific experiment right now, as you're watching this video, um, well, what's crazy is most of that experiment is already passed right now. So wherever you are on that, you can't be certain that, that uh, you're remembering things 100% correctly. 
Should you doubt that? No, right? I mean, there's no good reason to doubt that. It's, it's not 100% certainty, but we believe it with a probability, with a high probability. There are all kinds of things that we believe with just probability and not with certitude. So, for example, uh, you grab an apple. Do you know for a fact that wasn't a poisoned apple? No, but I mean, can you even live if you start thinking that way? I, I don't know if anything that I have in front of me has been poisoned. Uh, for certain, no. Uh, so in, in philosophy, just like in life, we believe things with a, a degree of probability. Some things we hold because we think like, you know, these things I, I'm almost sure of. And some things we're like, man, eh, maybe it's right. Maybe it's wrong. I don't know. Well, I sort of lean this way. And so uh, that's a legitimate enterprise just as much as, as 100% certitude. And finally, I think uh, uh, this objection fails because uh, that sounds uh, really technical, right? This objection fails. I don't mean to be like that, like to be the jerk kind of guy, like, hey, you failed at your objection. Uh, I, I just mean to say, like, I don't think that this objection is something that I agree with, at least, because uh, I think everybody already does philosophy. You know, if, if you're going to say we shouldn't do philosophy because you can never know anything in philosophy, well... Uh, we just already automatically do philosophy. So, for example, th think about this. Do you think anybody has zero opinions about the kinds of things that we should or shouldn't do? Right? Um, do you think, for example, somebody, you're like, uh, child molestation, what do you think about that? And they're like, man, I can go either way. Right? I mean, or, uh, you know, assaulting people. I don't know. You know? Uh, the Holocaust. You know, the, you're going to have an opinion one way or another. Well, you have an ethical stance. You may not say, I know for a fact this is the right thing, but at the least you have an opinion about it, right? Or what about the kinds of things that are or are not real? A friend of yours comes up to you and says, I'm telling you, man, Snuffleupagus is real. I've seen him, right? You're not going to be like, well, maybe he is, maybe he's not. I don't know. I don't have an opinion, right? You're going to have some kind of opinion on, on the kinds of things that are real. Or what about the kinds of things that you can know, right? Somebody says to you, I, I know because I just have a feeling deep in my bosom that, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I use that word, but that there is a, a teacup between Mars and Earth and it's just floating there. I just, I can feel it, right? Um, you probably don't know that. Uh, and you have an opinion about that, right? You, or at least an opinion. Maybe you know that you can't know that kind of a thing. I, I don't know. My point is, you are making a philosophical stance somewhere, right? Maybe not a 100% certitude stance, maybe a, not a, I am certain you can't know that. But at the very least, you know, you lean a particular way. The problem is for, for most of us on these philosophical topics, uh, we're not well trained on them, right? So we have philosophical positions, but we don't have good reasons for those positions. So philosophy, all we're doing is, is trying to find the best reasons uh, for believing the things that we have the most probability for believing. Um, uh, some things maybe we know in philosophy. So, for example, I, I think you can know that, that you can't have a squared circle. Um, but, uh, but for a lot of things, it, it, it's okay to just say that, yeah, we know this with uh, probability. I just happen to think this, or here are my reasons, and, and that's all we need to do. So, as always, I think the best philosophy happens in dialogue. Please comment, let me know what you think about everything that we talked about today. Also, an additional question. What do you think is uh, or are the most important beliefs that we hold? And do we hold these with more certitude or less certitude than other beliefs? And why or why not? Um, is it really important that we have certainty in these areas? Should we be able to just be okay one way or another? Um, if you find value in this, please uh, subscribe. It really helps my, my channel, helps me to do these kinds of videos. Um, and uh, please also like and comment and uh, share with a friend so they can join the conversation. Adios.